coming out this afternoon, yeah. spend a little time with us, and mm -hmm. so we could, you know, get a little more perspective on you know, how this community has changed over the years. Yes. Um, first thing, if you could please tell us what your name is. My name is Maddie uh, uh, B. Beatrice Bynum Jordan Jones. <laughs> That's a lot of names, <laughs> but uh, Maddie Jones. Maddie Jones. Okay. And you said Bynum was your maiden name. My maiden name. Yes. Um, you know, has your family been here in Wilson a long time? All, 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 of, uh, all of my life really? and before, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, so you said you've lived here all your life in Wilson. Well, I was here all of my mm -hmm. life until I got married. And then mm -hmm. when I left Wilson, I stayed away until uh, I returned. Mm -hmm. I retired at least in 1981. Really? Okay. I came back to Wilson. Okay. Well, where did you go during well, that time? Philadelphia. Philadelphia? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Um, what brought you there? You said marriage and... Well, yes, I, I was married and I, I went to New York just for uh, a short span of time. Mm -hmm. I did not like New York. <laughs> that was so different from Wilson, mm -hmm. my little country hometown, mm -hmm. uh -huh. to go to New York. That was a no-no. So then I had a uh, uh, family in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So that was a different place, Philadelphia, New York. Philadelphia was more like Wilson mm -hmm. than New York. So that's where I'm at. Okay, and you said you came back here in the early 90s? In 91. Okay. Um, now before you left here, um, did you ever get any, do any work while you were here? Like yes. After high school? Or? Yes, I did. Um, I, when I graduated from a Darden High School, mm -hmm. there was um, a drugstore uh, Shay's Drug Store. Did mm -hmm. you ever hear of Shay's Drug Store? I think I've heard that come up That was before. one of the, the only black, large, I would say, drug mm -hmm. stores in Wilson. And Mr. Shay uh, hired most of the uh, graduates from Darden mm -hmm. High School to sort of give them um, a start in life for us making uh, money and work and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I worked there for a while. Yeah. After that, did you go on to college? No, uh, I didn't. I, I, I did other jobs mm -hmm. uh, other than going to job, going to college. I worked for a calf stand. Mm -hmm. uh, well, before that time, I worked uh, for Briggs Hotel. Mm -hmm. And I operated an elevator there. Okay. Yeah, the elevator at Briggs up there. And a funny thing happened there. Uh, the housekeeper was a white woman, mm -hmm. a white woman. Mm -hmm. And I was operating the elevator. And I was hired by a gentleman, the manager. Who, who they had sent down from Virginia uh, to manage the place. And he wanted me to wear a uniform, a white uniform, and uh, that was fine, you know. So he said to me, he said, I want you to wear a uniform and you, could, and you can tell the housekeeper to uh, uh, service your uniform, you know, get it clean up and everything. So he said, the only thing I ask of you is my wife would be upstairs, well, be up on the roof uh, getting sun, the sun tan, I suppose. He said, just check in on her every mm -hmm. once in a while for me. Fine, I had no problem with that. But the housekeeper told me that I could not wear that white uniform. <laughs> that only she was allowed to wear the white uniform. And I told him. So he said, not only are you going to wear this white uniform, she is going to clean it for you. <laughs> so it, it worked out. Of course, she was very, very angry. Right. Right now, right now. But that was fine. So that was, that was the beginning of my really seeing a big difference. Mm -hmm. Because I never, I, different from a lot of uh, people here mm -hmm. that were raised here, my, my, my mother and my, my families, they work for white people, mm -hmm. you know, in the kitchen and doing different things. I never did that. Mm -hmm. So that was my beginning, knowing what a big difference that they would make. Mm -hmm. So 
I stayed there for a while, and then I left there and <clears throat> went down to the cab cab company. That place is still there, right across. It's on Nash Street. Okay. So I worked there, and that was a, a black cab company, and uh, I stayed there for quite some time. But I had a run-in also with one of the cab drivers who was working for uh, a white family. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they would call down there for him, you know, and at this particular time I answered the phone. But I answered it as I would answer anybody. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, because I didn't know who she was anyway. And um, I would say, hello, United Cab Company, may I help you? Mm -hmm. And she told me who she was and everything. I said, uh, I said, okay, I, I, I'll tell him. I did not know that she was going to complain to him that I had not been uh, courteous to her, the way in which I answered the telephone. Mm -hmm. I did not say yes ma'am, mm -hmm. no ma'am. That was her complaint. <laughs> so he in turn was going to fire me. They were all black cab, uh, cab drivers. But when he wanted to do that, the rest of the cab drivers rallied and said, oh no. So whatever you are going to put in to make up a salary, we'll double it, we'll do it. You don't have to do that. So that was good. What was the name of that cab company? United Cab. United company. Cab Company. Yes. Okay. United Cab Company. And uh, it was there. Mm -hmm. That I met my husband. Was he a cab driver? No, he came down to visit his father, who was sick. And uh, in fact, his father was a minister here, and uh, I was curious. That that was that was me. That's just the way I was. And we had a conversation, and we struck up a relationship. He was going back and forth, coming back and forth. So. It was a good thing all those other drivers pitched in on that money, they didn't. Yeah, yeah, it sure was. Yeah. Um, we'll go backtrack a little bit. Okay. Of course, you know, you said you were born and raised here. What, mm -hmm. what part of the uh, part of Wilson, specifically like streetwise, did you grow up on? Okay, I it was. You should. This is Hind Street out here, mm -hmm. right? If you go all the way back Hind Street till you get to Pender Street. Okay. There's a little place over there that's called Whitfield Homes. Whitfield Homes was at that time really a, a nice section of the black community. And it was, there were, there were no projects at that time. Mm -hmm. They were homes, individual homes. So that's where I was born and raised. And I did not know that they had done any of this, made any of these changes, like the bridge or anything. Mm -hmm. And it was just so foreign to come back. And, but I knew that the houses were gone mm -hmm. because my um, when when the city brought up bought up all of the homes mm -hmm. there, uh, of course, those who were still there they got their part in it. And my mother at that time. Uh, was no longer with us. She had died, my mother. Mm -hmm. So my brother and I got her share, and believe it or not, that's how I bought my first home in Philadelphia. Really? Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. So that was building the Hind Street extension out here. Yes. That's correct. Where, where that the uh, the oval pass mm -hmm. is there, that bridge. Right. If you look down, mm -hmm. that's where our house was. All all in there were homes, mm -hmm. nice homes. In a previous conversation that we, we had with another, another individual, they told us pretty much, you know, when that street was built, it devastated the community yeah. by doing that. Yeah, because it, we, we had nice homes in there, you know. Yeah. And there, was, there were people who lived on that street were able to buy another a home. Because right. when I came back to visit, I mm -hmm. visited some of their homes, mm -hmm. you know. You said you went to Darden High School. Mm -hmm. um, going back even further, where did you go to like, elementary school? Uh, <laughs> uh, I went to another, it looked, it, to me it looked like a house. Mm -hmm. But then uh, it, it might have been a church. Mm -hmm. 
but I was only there for the first grade and uh, maybe the second grade. But I went to, they call it the graded school. Mm -hmm. And then it became Sally, Sally Barber, Sally Barber Graded School. Okay. Something like that. But that was on Stantonsburg. Well, it's now Pender Street, but it was Stantonsburg Street at that time. Mm -hmm. And now they have all of those little houses and everything all over. Right. But that's so I only went to two schools. Mm -hmm. And from from Stantonsburg School or uh, the Grady School, I went to the fourth grade, which was uh, Darden Alumni. I went to um, the fourth grade through the twelfth grade at C. H. Darden. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um. What was the school like when you went there? You recall? Well, um... Because you were there for many years, right? Oh, uh, so yeah, from right. the fourth grade. Right. Through, I would say that the teachers that were there had your best interest at heart. And uh, they cared for you. And it was a learning environment that was really good for us, right? You know, and that was like all we knew. Mm -hmm. It was like an extension mm -hmm. of family, because we walked mm -hmm. from home to the school. That's a pretty good and walk from all the way over there. We never mm -hmm. rode a bus. Mm -hmm. We, I guess, we we probably didn't have buses. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we did not. Right. But we walked there, and uh, it it was a good walk. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we, it, it, to me, since that was the only thing that we had, I, I thought it was, there was no fighting. We didn't have gangs as I knew right. today. So as I say, it was, um, it was, it was a caring experience because it seemed that all of the teachers uh, cared for you, all the children that went there, they knew each other, you know, it was like one great big family, because you know you weren't from across town or here and there, because we were all, you know, I started walking from Stantonsburg Street and High Street and came up to Carroll Street mm -hmm. right here, where it's located, mm -hmm. and then ran on over to uh, Darden High School. Something we've got from other people we've spoken with is, you know, it seemed like the teachers, administrators, faculty, it seemed like they always had uh, the students' interest, you know, at, at heart or whatever, because, you know, it was almost like they were an extension of the family, you know, yeah. they took care of it. It yeah. seemed like it was the same, I guess, through the church, too. Yeah. It, and another thing I can remember very vividly, <laughs> I put on some lipstick, because I thought that, you know, teenage. And there was <laughs> one teacher, and I never will forget it, she called me in and she talked to me. And it was so, and, and, and I remember today that that's the kind of thing that we wish we could have. Someone that could tell you how interested they are in you and this is not what you should be doing at an age like this. Very appropriate and I, I like that. <laughs> yeah. I just don't, you don't find much of that today anymore, I would say. Mm -hmm. You, you feel all the years that you were there that you've gotten, I guess, the best education that you could possibly get. I do. Mm -hmm. I do. And and the strange thing is when, well, uh, I, I am a retired teacher. Okay. But I didn't go back to school right away mm -hmm. because my husband came from a family. His father was a uh, 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 believe that if you had a family, the mother should stay home mm -hmm. with the children until the children were of school age. Mm -hmm. So my husband's father was a pastor, one of, one of the pastors of Jackson Chapel. Okay. What was his name? Reverend Jordan, Reverend P.F. Okay. Jordan. That was my father-in-law. So he instilled that in his his sons. You know. 
So I was not to work. I didn't have anything. We didn't have any, you know. But the children had me. And when he came home, he had his family. I was there with him. So they believed that a mother should be there with the children and they should be raised in that type of environment until they left and they went, you know, to the tech school, in which I was there until each one of them were able to go to school, to right. kindergarten. So uh, that to me is, is what I, I believe that I carried with me into the classroom. Mm -hmm. you know, it helped me out. Relying on that type of experience that I had, that that's what a teacher should be. Now, you, you said you were in New York for a while. Did you teach in school no, systems no, no, up no, there? No, Never no, did? No. In Philadelphia? In Philadelphia. Yeah, you did okay? Yeah, All right. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember who, like, were any teachers or administrators there who influenced you? Well, there was a little teacher. Her name was Mrs. Whitley. Mm -hmm. Whitley. I don't she influenced me and Mrs. Alexander and Miss Whitehead. Uh, they they were my and Miss Williams, mm -hmm. Mrs. Williams. Yeah. Just kind of going back into the neighborhood that you grew up in over there. Is there any anything I guess you know kind of pops out in your memory of that neighborhood? years back. Yeah, the thing that pops out uh, is the fact that uh, we didn't have a lot of places to go mm -hmm. for or to like to entertain, but we did a lot of singing mm -hmm. uh, at my house on Sunday afternoon. There were uh, people in the neighborhood uh, would come and sit on our porch mm -hmm. and we just sang songs, hymns, mm -hmm. and, you know, everything. That to me was really important because I didn't have brothers and sisters mm -hmm. and so I was like the last young child in the home so I think everybody flocked there. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of singing and, 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 and playing the games and all but mostly singing. Was this kind of, a, you said it was on Sunday afternoon, so mm -hmm. was this kind of an extension of, of church earlier in the day? No. No? No. Not at all? Mm -hmm. Not at all. Now did y'all go to a church? Well, um, I did, mm -hmm. but I went to the church in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to any of the other churches that were like, like out on uh, uh, Nash Street, and then I didn't go to any of those churches. What, what church was it that you would have attended? It, it, it was called, um, it, was the, it was a holiness church, mm -hmm. and it was Reverend Holiday. Right. I don't, I don't remember his name. But that's the church that I grew up in. So this is one that doesn't exist anymore? I believe that it does. It does okay. I'm, I'm not too sure, but I, I remember. I know that his son still lives in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and I know he has a daughter that lives here. I believe that during the time I was here, the father, that was Reverend Holiday's church, mm -hmm. they call you know, they call it, the church belongs to the past. Right. <laughs> but he, there was a, a church, and I don't know whether that's the name of the church, but I remember that his daughter was one of the church. Now, it might be the Reverend Holiday Church. I don't know whether that's, it might be carried over to another name. I'm not too sure. I remember that's a long time ago. I was going to ask if you remember what street it was near. Was this? Uh, Moore South Street. There is a street called Moore Street. Mm -hmm. And it was on the corner of Moore and Sub or something like that. Okay, kind of in that, in that neighborhood towards. Oh, it was towards in the neighborhood. Okay. Yes, okay. Yeah, in the neighborhood. And, um, and, the, and the women of the church, they were like mothers to everybody in the neighborhood. Yeah. You probably heard that. Um, don't go and tell your mother or your grandmother anything because when you get home, you're going to get another <laughs> whipping or something like that. So, and this, that, that type of neighborhood is where, where I exist today. Right. Kind of saying just how the things were at school, they looked out for you. These women in church looked out yes, for you too. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I know that, like I said, that's one thing we've gotten from all these interviews is the church and the school. Yeah. See, my mother, my mother did not raise me. Mm -hmm. My mother lived in New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
my grandmother raised me, so that's what I relate so much to the older people because I was the last one in that household, mm -hmm. but everybody in that neighborhood raised me. Mm -hmm. I was, I'm just going to ask you this so I can get sort of a time period we're looking at. What 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 decade was this that we're talking about when you grew up there? In the 20, I was born in 1926. You don't have to report that. <laughs> okay. I never would have guessed that. <laughs> yeah, I'm shocked. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm I saw serious. him ran back. <laughs> I'm serious. Um, something mentioned, you know, talking about earlier a bit about businesses and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, were there any stores, you know, businesses that you remember, especially within your community, that you know you frequented a lot, you know, shopped at? There was a store uh, on Stanton's Bird Street, and that store is still there. It's vacant, but that store is still sitting there. And this is what's now on Pender. Yeah, it's right. up now on Penn right. and Stuck Street. It's right down that corner. Mm -hmm. It's still there. Uh, I can't remember what the name of the store was, mm -hmm. but it's still there. But that's where we all went. Every time you got a penny, mm -hmm. you run across the street to the store and bought something with a penny or a nickel. That was a lot of money. Right. So was this kind of like a, I think it's like a five and dime or a general store? No, it was a grocery store. It was store. a grocery store, mm -hmm. okay. That's another store now right on right opposite on it and it's called Super Duper. I know where you're talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Super Duper was not there at that okay. time, but this this store was there. I almost called the name of that store. Mm. Name it, and, and there were two brothers. One had a store on, on Suck Street and the other one had a store on Green Street. That Green Street store is there still today. Okay. And uh, but it had the same name. That's why why I remember they were like brothers. And my brother used to work for the one on uh, on Green Street. Okay. Okay. Now that I kind of have an I you know idea of the time mm -hmm. period we're looking at here, did, mm -hmm. did you leave this area what late forties, early fifties, or just were you here longer than that? No, no. I was I left in the mid twenties. I was 20 in my 20s. In your 20s, okay, okay. I was gone, I think, for like 30, 30 minutes. So you, so you kind of missed when, I guess, when this community went through, you know, integration changes and stuff yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. Now, did you still have a lot of family that were here during yeah. that time period? So did you come back here a lot and visit? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, every, you know, practically every summer. You know, every summer. You know, the children, you would always bring the children back home. Right. So, uh, you know, of course, like you said, you were living, I guess, in New York, Philadelphia at this time. Oh, so things are yeah. a little different up there. Yeah. You know, as you, you mm -hmm. came back and visited during those Not summers. Not too much different. Really? Mm -hmm. When you're talking about prejudice, right. saying I got... Let me ask, because I'm familiar with Philadelphia. Yeah. What, what, what part of Philly did you live in? I lived in West Philly, and when I moved back home, I, I lived in uh, Winfield. With, okay. I'm just curious, I want to bring it up because mm -hmm. I have a, a father-in-law who, who lives in North Philadelphia. Yeah. And I'm yeah. familiar with the area, Germantown yeah. area. But when I first went there, I stayed in, in, in the North Philly. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, two blocks from Connex State. Okay, okay. You remember Connex State? I got it. My aunt, I, we stayed with her. She was at 16th and Lehigh. Okay. My father-in-law lived off of Ven not Venango. <coughs> Okay. Just near uh, Children's Hospital. Yeah, there. yeah. So, uh, I know the, na the, the neighborhoods yeah. up there. And I was there with, for a while until we got a house. Mm -hmm. And then from there we, you know, bought our home. And then... Right. But was, well, coming, coming back to this, you know, when you, I guess you'd visit during those summers, did you, were you, were you seeing changes occur through here as, you know, there were, every, everything was trying to get integrated during that time period through the 60s, 70s? I um, I was coming back uh, pretty often because at that time we had organized here in Wilson you might have the Dart Alumni. Right. Okay. So when I left we, there was still the Dart High. Right. Uh, but uh, once they uh, integrated then it was no longer the Dart High. Mm -hmm. I think they said the tenth grade housed everybody mm -hmm. 
And but uh, I was familiar with the changes mm -hmm. because that's when we formed what we call the uh, CH Dart Alumni Association right. because of all of the classes that had gone through that school. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was familiar with the, uh, a lot of changes. Well, I see, since you're a part of the Alumni uh, you know, Association, do you recall when the school closed? I think it was 1971. 71. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I was just curious on that because I know in a, in a previous conversation, you know, we, we with people telling us that students, especially in the late 60s, they had the freedom of choice, mm -hmm. I guess, to attend whatever school they wanted to, mm -hmm. I guess, until, I guess, basically until integration was forced on everybody and they had to go to this school or that mm -hmm. school. But I actually had a conversation with a white man a few days ago, mm -hmm. and he told me that he did go, he went to Darden, mm -hmm. and he, he just told me it was just 10th grade. Yeah, and I think he said he was only there one semester, and yes. then he sent him off to another school. Yeah. So I was, you know, some, there was some confusion on why yeah. they did it like yeah. that. I remember that what they did is they would bus the children in mm -hmm. to Darden, and I was so interested in it because we were coming back and forth right. uh, for the uh, uh, the alumni uh, uh, once a year when mm -hmm. they would have the affair, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, that's when they, they were coming to. Darden High just for the tenth grade, and I don't know where the other other students went for the eleventh and twelfth. Right. Other schools are, but um, yeah, it, it, it that was interesting, but uh, it 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 wasn't anything that I did not expect. But living in the north, those things, same type of things were happening all over. Right. 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 See, they had what they call redlining, and I kept moving so that my children could go to a different school. Right. And uh, I moved from what they call, what they would say, uh, this neighborhood that they had a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. I'd leave there, right. and I, I moved into uh, West, oh, not West Over. Mm -hmm. It's where. Uh, hmm. The name of the school where they have it's it's all old everybody knows about school. I'll call it probably mm -hmm. sooner or later. But it was on it was Fifty Ninth Street and uh, Fifty Ninth Street in Philadelphia. Okay. And it was a school that uh, a lot of basketball players. It was very familiar uh, school there, and I wanted to move in that area, and I wasn't able to for quite some time. But when they the red line and sort of moved away. We were able to move and like the first block to integrate that neighborhood. Uh -huh. And then we moved from there to Winfield. Okay. And I met someone uh, on the street and they saw me and they said, oh, who do you work for up here? So it's the <laughs> same type of thing. Right. And I said to her, oh, I, I, I live here. And, they, and these were people who had lived uh, that I knew from uh, from another area okay. there, so it, the same type of thing was going on all over right. at the same time. And so a lot of people don't think those problems existed up there, but, no. but yes, they, they did. did. They did. Oh, yes, they did. So this redlining was just kind of no, another segregation tactic. Yes, absolutely, one day. absolutely. Mm -hmm. But you moved around to get inside the red line. I was able forward. to once there was once uh, say like older people were dying now. Mm -hmm. And, and the same thing that happens, happens here. And then uh, the family, uh, the younger people, they no longer want to live in that area and they move out. So then the white people are not going to come back into this area. So who can they uh, sell the house to? So they're going to start selling the houses to, to right. us. You know? So, so that's right. what it happens here. It happens there. The same thing. Well, I'm just going to say that the neighborhood my father in law lived in, in, in Philadelphia. Near it's kind of east of Germantown, and you, you know all the old row houses and stuff. He said years before, you know, it was, they were all white communities. Yes. And now they said community he lives, so it's all either African Americans or Cubans yes. and Puerto Ricans, all yeah. in that one neighborhood. That's right. You know, it's <laughs> my son told me uh, his. They said, Mom said you would not believe where we used to live, Overbrook High School. Mm -hmm. Okay. Overbrook, that's where we live. Two two blocks down on Overbrook High School. Mm -hmm fabulous school up there. And he said, you would not believe what they have done to the area. You know, it's just so completely changed. 
and they went in there and rebuild and put stores and everything. People weren't coming back in there. Then they moved out into Winfield, and uh, then they moved out to Drexel Hill, mm -hmm. and uh, it just goes on and on. It's, yeah. it's the same thing happens all the time. Right. They said you what came back here in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, coming back here you know, every summer or whatever with your, your kids and during all those years, they actually come back here to live. Did you really see a lot of stark changes within this neighborhood? Well, the neighborhood that I lived in before no longer exists. Right. Except for, uh, they call them uh, projects, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so I thought that I knew that it was going to happen, it was happening in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. But the projects here were more like homes right. than they were in Philadelphia. Philadelphia just kept stacking them. High rises. High rises, mm -hmm. high rises. Oh, okay. So, um, uh, the, I still think that there's a lot to be done here. Mm -hmm. uh, really, really. It, it still exists. Now, do you live within this neighborhood now, or do you live in another part of Wilson? What? I don't live in this neighborhood okay. now. Right. I live right off of Raleigh Road. Okay, okay. Know. Right. But uh, it's almost like a magnet. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't right. matter. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> Home is like that. Yeah. But I think I was the second black family that moved in this neighborhood where I am now. Really? Okay. And uh, <laughs> and it took the flood to come in. And when Floyd uh, died, Floyd, Floyd mm -hmm. came in, it was like people said, oh, thank you for the flood. We can now get out of this neighborhood. We were really stuck. <laughs> White people. <Right. laughs> and they, their children, yeah. even but I, I had gotten to know mm -hmm. all of them down there, mm -hmm. but their children had even said to me, so you know, it seems, it seems funny, but uh, if this flood had not come, my mother and father would still be here, because they did not want to leave that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They didn't, but they were stuck in the neighborhood. Where, they, like they said, where, where were they going to go? Right. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. and that's, that's the way it is. Mm. <laughs> We'll ask you too, um, like I said, you went to high school here and then at the end of the year you ended up leaving. Mm -hmm. Do you recall a lot of the people that you went to high school with, did they stay here or did a lot of them leave also? A lot of them left, mm -hmm. but the, major the majority of them left, I mean, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll put it like that. Right. The reason why I'm saying so is because uh, when we formed the, uh, the C.H. Dyer Alumni mm -hmm. Association, we had um, we had a chapter in New York, a chapter in New Jersey, one in uh, Philadelphia, one in Washington, and I think that was the closest ones. So once a year, more than once a year, because each, each chapter had an affair once a year. So when they had an affair once a year, all of the other chapters supported that one chapter. So you got to see all of the people mm -hmm. over and over again. You go to those different cities. And yeah, everybody, yes, it was, it, now all of those people mostly are dying out. Because we thought that we no longer have, have a chapter. Mm -hmm. we, a lot of us moved back home, mm -hmm. you know, we retired and we moved back home. And some of those chapters no longer exist there. But at one time, it was like, oh, huge reunion of all of the, of the children that went to C.H. Darden mm -hmm. High School. And you were able to see all of the children of that people. Once a year, going around, but well, more than once a year, like five times a year. And the largest one would be back home here in Wilson, where all of them would come, all of the different chapters would come. So, and they still do that. They still I, do that I know the, the building's off of what, Lipscomb Road yes. over there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, we built that building. All of the chapters would work and send home X whatever per year. So they were able to burn the mortgage and get rid of all of that. So that's, that was really, really nice because you were able to reconnect right. uh, several times during the year. 
I'll ask you too, since you would have, I guess you were in high school during World War II, yes. during that time period. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any reflections that, you know, how this community may have changed during the war? You know, people that went off to fight, did you really have a lot of this interaction with any people that well, went fought? Or? Like I say, mm -hmm. the reaction uh, came about with so many of them, the young men, mm -hmm. they went back, they went to college, mm -hmm. they went, and uh, once a year, they were able to reconnect with all of us because of the reunions right, right. that we had. And I think that was the best thing that could ever happen to mm -hmm. us. Once there were no longer a darn high school, mm -hmm. we still kept it alive and kept it going. And even the fellows that went out to the World War, when they came back home, they were able to go into college and get a college education mm -hmm. and get a lot of, uh, of uh, different types of jobs and skills that they would not have had, perhaps, had they been able to stay here because they were all able to go to college and, and I guess the, the Army and whatever uh, uh, they were involved in, uh, they were able to do that because of, uh, of Uncle Sam. Right, it's interesting you're talking about all these chapters. Basically, they're all up in the Northeast, so it is, I guess it's seemed like everybody that all that lived here in these neighborhoods, they all went up there. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. We had quite a few people out in California, but they not enough to form a chapter. Right. So, but they still came back. Mm -hmm. But it was right up in the northeast. Um, you know, a lot of people you went to school with. Do you know what kind of jobs they all went up there to get that they that they couldn't get here? I guess down here you had the big thing, you know, you know, agriculture was big down here and I, mm -hmm. I, I would assume a lot of people didn't want to get into that type of work. A lot of them got into government. I tell you, uh, one wonderful thing that happened to those of us who were not able to go to college here, mm -hmm. uh, in, in Philadelphia, you probably heard mm -hmm. of Reverend Leon Sullivan, mm -hmm. the OIC. Well, I see that it's here, mm -hmm. and you, but there it started in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. under Dr. Leon Sullivan. Mm -hmm. He had the OIC and all of the unemployment. In fact, it's the church that I was a member of. My pastor was on city council, mm -hmm. and he told all of us that the only thing I ask of you is that you. Uh, you know, complete as much as you can of your educational background. Because once you come down to city council, you have to pass the test. Once you pass the test, you're in. You're in. You have to. So that was one thing. That church was run over. They had so many people. We had like 3,000 members. And out of those members, we had doctors, lawyers, everybody that was in the educational field, they were there. And uh, even uh, Gray, I remember he just passed not too long ago. And uh, there were a lot of ministers there, a lot of doctors and lawyers, and they were able to help people. Reverend Leon Sullivan, uh, I don't know who that's the corporation, they had this OIC that met in a warehouse in the very beginning. From that warehouse, they had different uh, sections that, uh, uh, say for instance, key punch. It's nothing but computer now, right. but at that time it was a key punch operator. And I just found my certificate just the other day <laughs> that I had graduated from, this, from OIC. Mm -hmm. uh, signed by Dr. Leon Sullivan, the key punch operator. <laughs> what he did was um, form a contract with the government, like the ship, that, that, uh, thing, where they employed. The shipyard now? Yes, the okay. shipyard. What they did is they sent people from uh, OIC with a contract. Well, they had a contract with the ship. Those people were sent there to do work. They, I think, I don't know how many months they were, had to work there, but afterwards they had to pass a test, and some of them were hands-on, 
If they passed the test, they were able to get a job there. And if not, then they could go back to school. Mm -hmm. But with me, I went to uh, Spiegel's. Mm -hmm. And I became an instructor there mm -hmm. at Spiegel's Incorporated. You probably heard of Spiegel's in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So that's how a lot of people were able to get jobs when they left here because of going to such a place as OIC and it became mm -hmm. huge. Those people got jobs in the shipyard, other government facilities. And like I say with me, I, I was uh, uh, working with speakers and I did uh, as an instructor there. So there were a lot of good things that happened. Uh, a note to us coming out of OIC. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so really, I guess, you say a lot of people left here just because there weren't the opportunities here that Absolutely. they could have anywhere. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. What what could they do? Right. There was really nothing to do here. There were the factories, mm -hmm. which our grandparents, parents and grandparents were working in the factory. I never worked in the factory. Mm -hmm. I guess I could say I was fortunate, but mm -hmm. I never worked in the factory. I never worked really in, in the kitchen. I never done mm -hmm. any, any of that. I was fortunate enough to go from working with Dr. Shade and then with the, um, uh, uh, the cap stand, you know. Yeah. And from there, I went north, you know. The Spiegel's. Uh, what was it like at Spiegel's? You had some struggles there, didn't you? I had some struggles. Like what? I had some struggles at Spiegel's. First of all, we were trying to get a union in there. Yeah. And I don't know what happens to me. Somebody or another. I must <laughs> I must have been born to say, no, you can't do this. This is not right, you know. I right. must have been. Because at Spiegel's, somehow or another when we would have um, meetings and everything, mm -hmm. I would Open my mouth, and then they decided that I needed to, to be uh, a representative. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> and I was yeah. a representative to the, to, well, we hadn't formed a union mm -hmm. at that time, but we had this big meeting. And I remember saying something, opening my mouth and saying something, and this man from Spiegel says, we need to take her out of here. <laughs> 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 so they did. They took me and he said that I could take any other person in that room, but I needed to go out and talk with this man. But I didn't really know what was happening because I worked at night and we had, we were getting information from Chicago. You know, speakers plant in Chicago. They were feeding us, but they were just telling us, see, they had already gotten a union in Chicago. So they were feeding us good information. So I just thought that what what they had in Chicago, we ought to have it in Philadelphia. I didn't know that that wasn't what they were going to do. Right. <laughs> and so when, we, when they pull us out, because I said, well, in Chicago, thus and so, so they said, let's get her out of here. <laughs> And he, we talked, and he said to me, he said, what we have in, in Chicago is in Chicago. Mm -hmm. We will not sit here in Philadelphia and negotiate a contract with you that we have in, 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 in Chicago, mm -hmm. what we get in Philadelphia, so Philadelphia. And, but what he, he made this statement, which was wrong, he said, well, what you have to do is to go back in to this gathering where we had. And you have to tell the people that you made a mistake, you know, and uh, because who do you think they're gonna believe, me or you? So it's gonna be best for you to go back in and tell them. Said myself, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when I went back in there, I kept saying, what am I gonna say, what am I supposed to say? So, the words came from somewhere. And when he called on me to get up and make a statement, the only thing I could say was, at this particular time, I don't care to make a rebuttal. I don't even know where that word came from. <laughs> 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 but that's what I said. 
So we ended it back. We got the union. You did. And I was made a shop steward. <laughs> no surprise. They did a job on me. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! They kept right on. They they were on me. I couldn't move. If I would go into an office to to call the union, because I was it, anything was going on. I was you know I had telephone that I could make a call. And I had my union book. Mm -hmm. I went in this room and somebody they the word is squeal. Right. Yeah. And they said she's in the office and now on the telephone. <laughs> So, well, we heard you were in the office on the telephone with your little black book. Well, they kept on, they gave me a test mm -hmm. because they said that um, they wanted to promote me to another job. Mm -hmm. and I said, they're going to get me out of the union. I know they're going <laughs> to yeah. get me out of this yeah. union. And uh, so I said, and where is this? They told me it's in management. Mm -hmm. I knew I was doomed. Mm -hmm. So um, when we ha when they gave me the test, I didn't I didn't try to pass anything. I just messed up all. <laughs> <laughs> and it came, then they had someone come and say, "Guess what? You passed the test. <laughs> you did wonderful." I said, "What was my score?" <laughs> so well, we're not allowed to give you your yeah. score. But you passed that test, you did really, really well. Oh well, I know I gotta go now. Right. And they moved me out of there and they moved me into management. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what they did up that you speak of how they done you, you mm -hmm. know, you had to done people. If if, if you don't uh, send us your payment in mm -hmm. and then you have to write a letter and telling them, you know, we have done this and so but you have not paid. It was just a mess. But anyway, they gave me this desk. And I said, Phew, this is really hard to be paid. <laughs> and they gave me a, um, my supervisor mm -hmm. over me. The supervisor over me was from North Carolina. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you, they could not fire me. They wanted to fire me. <laughs> the reason they couldn't fire me because I did everything that I was told, supposed to. I wrote letters. I did everything, and my name was up on the uh, marquee, mm -hmm. just like where I had passed. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go to eat. I just stayed at the desk. Then they gave me my name yeah, to put on the desk because I had finally made it. I wouldn't even put it up. But I was praying every day. Let this be my last job. That was the toughest job I ever had in my life. Yeah. That's how I got back in school yeah. to become a teacher. Because every day I left out of that place, yeah. I would say, Lord, don't let me have to go back into that to the speakers. And the man called me in the office one day and he said, You look so unhappy. He said, you have done everything you're supposed to mm -hmm. do, said, but you, we have to lay off some people. So what we're going to do, we're going to give you, uh, hmm, uh, what's that pay? Severance. Cut, hmm. Severance pay? Severance. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you severance pay, and we're going to let you draw your unemployment compensation, and blah, blah, blah. That's the first when that man said that I jumped across that hook and I scared him so bad, he said, ah. So the happiest day of your life. Happiest day of my life. And that's when I went back to school. And, uh, and, and then afterwards I got into the school system and I was there until I, until I uh, retired. What did you uh, teach when you were? Special ed. Special ed. Mm -hmm. Sure did. Certain grades or? Well, I, not certain grades um, because I, I did a lot of skipping around according to where they needed me. And, but before I retired, I was teaching uh, in high school. Okay. Yeah, I was teaching high school, 12th grade, 11th grade, you know, like that. One of the things seems a little different now, though, you know, I was 
graduated from high school in 93, so I know you had all the kids, and, you know, for special ed, they had their own class. It seemed. Yeah. It seemed like, like nowadays, though, it's not they do that as much. It's why they try to integrate them into the class. Well, we class did. That was, that, well, that was the one thing mm -hmm. that uh, we fought against, mm -hmm. uh, uh, because the homeroom assignments, everybody, you know, was according to the age and everything. Right. So there was no difference. Mm -hmm. And what we did is, uh, if I saw that a student was doing well mm -hmm. in English or reading, and I worked, we, we had our own team, mm -hmm. and we worked together so that if a child was lacking in this or that, we were able to get with the other teacher mm -hmm. and integrate our work so that child could come up to par. So that was the that to me was the most uh, important thing that had ever happened to me in my life, to see those children uh, struggling so, mm -hmm. and then to be able to have them. Have you ever gone into any any other work, volunteer work or anything since you retired that involved oh, you know, special Oh, yeah. And stuff? Here oh. with Human Relations, I was with Human Relations mm -hmm. for so long mm -hmm. here. And, mm -hmm. and here, I, well, Kirk, People don't know, but they did have a curfew focus group here in Wilson. Really? Because I was on that curfew focus group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the sheriff's department, Brit, uh, oh Lord, uh, we had, we had, um, well, they still have it now with the sheriff's department. But I was there with, uh, with that group of ladies for quite some time. But with human relations, as long as the time I was there for about seven years. Where was this at now? With the, here in Wilson, okay. the Human Relations. Yeah. Okay. Was that with the, with the city? Yeah, okay. the city. Well, um, as we're kind of drawn towards the close of this, I was just going to ask if, if there's anything else that you wanted to add that might be important to note, and if there's anybody else you can think of that we might be able to interview also. Yeah, yeah. I was telling him that I do have some, some people Okay. And I, and I, he told me the way to not to call them. But I do think there's a, a lady that uh, um, that also worked. I think she's been here all the time. I believe I'm not too sure. Okay. But her name is Agnes Locus, I believe. But I wanted to. She had said that she would. She would. Uh, she wanted to be interviewed. But we all were thinking about the other. The other. Right. Group. Right. But I, and I have not talked with her since. But I would be happy to tell her okay. that uh, you know that this would is really really nice and, and, and she would be able to be relaxed and everything. Right. Because we were, I was thinking that we we're going to do it like in a group. In a group, okay. Uh, <laughs> so what would be the best thing? Do you want to contact her first and then? Yes, I'll let get me in touch contact her first, okay. right. and then I'll give you because I would want to give you her telephone number. Right. You know, I would like to contact, talk to her, know. and tell her. Uh, if, if, if it's okay with her, that I'll give you her telephone number, then she can call you. And then you can call okay. What was her last name? Locus. L-O-C-U-S? Mm -hmm. Oh, what was that? Okay. And I think, she, I think she told me she was a teacher. Really? Okay. There. But I know she's a member of Calvary Presbyterian. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That's interesting. They said, what, the majority, most people we've spoken with have all been educators. Yes. Well, you know, well that's, that's about all that was left here, you know, really. All right. Can I ask a, a question, a strand that you raised a little bit earlier when you were talking about racism? You said um, and you were very clear that when you went to Philadelphia, kind of had a different mask on, but it was the same was the thing. Same. Yeah. And then you said it still exists. Mm -hmm. Um, what does it look like now as opposed to 1940, 30? How is it different? And then, and then I, I, yeah. You know, the thing about it, you have that on? Is that still on? It's on. I'll turn it off if you want. <laughs> but. Um, I think that we, we were not aware of, of the racism mm -hmm. during that time. We as children, we this was just our neighborhood, and and, and this is just the way we live. I I right. never thought that we came in contact with a lot of racism. My uh, uh what we call him the milkman, mm -hmm. he, he was white, you right. know, and they came in the neighborhood mm -hmm. and did this and that. And the mailman, 
I never, I never thought about racism. Really? Mm -hmm. that it wasn't until, well, I guess it was more or less during the time when um, there was, they came back from service mm -hmm. and then they wanted to get jobs and the jobs were not available to them. Mm -hmm. And so in applying for them, then they realized what actually was taking place. I came into more racism, I believe, when I went to Philadelphia because I was not expecting I was here, I wasn't expecting. Right. You know, we were just, this is just where we live. <laughs> Nash Street, I worked for uh, black people all the time. You know, I never worked for white people until I worked at Briggs something. I never worked in the homes or the kitchen. I never did that. Right. So I didn't, ex I didn't experience it. It was just like you know everything that the community needed was here, so like yeah. it just you had no reason to go anywhere else. Right. Like it's like everything was kind of insulated. Right, you know? and I think when the book now I think uh, Miss uh, Agnes will know about uh, the the Woodward integration, Woolworth, and all like mm -hmm. that. Is see, had I been here mm -hmm. at that time, I would have noticed it more so. Right. But we had our drugstores here, several drugstores right up Nash Street, our doctors and the and the only thing I know when you went into the train station there was a, a fountain that says colored mm -hmm. and all like that. If you were to go to the train station here and then we were separated there because mm -hmm. we had one section for colored people yeah. and one section for the white mm -hmm. people. If you went to the train station and you were traveling but if you didn't travel, you know. Right. But that was the one thing. Yeah. Uh, but other than that... You know, some people say, uh, not me, mm -hmm. but some people say, well, you know, now we got a black president and uh, schools are all integrated and all that stuff's behind us. <laughs> no, it's not. So it looks different. I mean, if you mm -hmm. care to notice, yeah. you can see it's still there. It's there. That changes the way we have to address it, I yes. think. Yes, yes. Uh, it's, it's in some ways when there's a, a colored fountain and a white fountain, you can form a picket line, you can point out, look at the difference in the fountains, what's that saying? You know, everything's out there and it's real visible. It's mm -hmm. easy to identify and to call attention to. In a way, it's... Um, it, 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 I guess it calls for different tactics, ways to address. Yeah, I, I look at I look at this, the racism maybe a little bit different than some of the other people, and they may be looking at it too. I'm going to take something that's really, really simple. TV. Mm -hmm. You look at TV. I'm, and I look at the view a lot. Okay. They make sure that they have one black person mm -hmm. in everything. Mm -hmm. So what do you call that? Token. Token. Is that racism or what? Yes. Let's be honest. That's what it is. Because I now know what you mean on that show. They had when they first started that show. They had one black lady, and when she left, who did they bring in to replace her? They brought in another black lady to replace yeah, her. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. but you never, and, and, and you take, for instance, city council. Mm -hmm. Will you ever have four blacks <laughs> and three whites? Not yet. They're going to stack it so that right. you, that they did all of this re, uh, oh, this is where we mm -hmm. but, uh, re, uh, remapping. Oh, redistricting? Redistricting. Oh, yeah. That's what they're trying to fight against. It's the same mm. thing. It is the same. The same thing. Because if we do this and so, we may have four blacks on city council. And then we may have three. It's the same, same people. Mm. Right. And do you think that doing away with same-day voter registration and voter ID laws and you think that's the same thing? 
is some people have said that um, since you have to pay to get an ID, they're addressing that now, but you have to pay to get an ID, so in effect it's a poll tax. And that that's why sort of you know, I never thought of that. the legislature are pushing mm -hmm. ways to restrict that. I mean, in a democracy, isn't the idea of the more people who vote and participate, the healthier the democracy is? So why would you start passing laws to restrict that access? Why would you do away with the same-day voter registration unless you want to eliminate some people who might right. participate in the that's, that's right, that's right. But I think they've gotten uh, a little s subtle too, you know. Mm -hmm. you, know mm -hmm. you can't call it a poll tax. You can't, you can't um, be so explicit, but maybe it is the same thing. That's what Reverend Barber said. <laughs> well, I, I, like I said, I, I agree with so that. far as the poll tax and all that, that, I never gave too much thought to that. I know that they were out there uh, marching, mm -hmm. and I know if he's involved in some deep distressed things that are going on, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I see that they're just trying to bring a lot of more things back that will integrate us more. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. And not very, very careful, it will happen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is why Matt and I think history is so important. <laughs> it is important. It is, because you see what was that repeating repetition? Oh, yeah. Repeating itself. Yeah. Repeating itself. Yeah. James Baldwin said something to the effect of, History is not something in the past, it's something we carry in our hearts, and that's why we study it. Mm -hmm. That's a bad paraphrase, it was much more poetic, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. but that's yeah. the gist of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Anything so, else to add? I don't.